love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that'll be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toil of life repay. that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory onward to the prize before us soon his beauty will be whole soon the pearly gates will open and we shall tread the streets of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that'll be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory yes when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that'll be when we all And shout the victory. The victory. <laughs> I surely do enjoy the hymns put to uh, new music, a little rhythm like that. My name is John Kranz, and I'm pastor of Crown Point Church, located in Richfield, Minnesota at 71st and Bloomington Avenue South. Richfield is a, so a southern suburb of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, and we have service at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning, and during this pandemic, we do have service. We wear masks during the church service and social distance, and we'd enjoy your company, come invite us, come, in, come and join us any Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, good friend Dallas Holm has written hundreds of songs, and he's written one, I think it's the only Christmas song he's ever written, and it's in his style. You'll be able to kind of hear a little flavor of how he sings in just the word presentation, but this one, he's given us permission that we can record, and we did so on the Harbinger's Quartet Christmas album, but it's entitled Holiday Inn. Well, they rode into town in the dark by the light of the moon. Mary felt her baby and she knew that it was coming soon. All they wanted was a small room where she could lay her head. All they wanted for Jesus was a bed. Well, they stopped at the Holiday Inn. There was a convention. The man said, sorry, ain't got no room without a reservation. But I'm sure if I call ahead, well, I can find you a bed. But it might have to wait till morning instead. Well, if they'd known baby Jesus was king, and if they'd known he created everything, I feel sure they'd give 
given him the executive suite But as it was, they just got sent on down the street Well, they walked a bit further till they came to another inn The man said, sorry, we're full, but y'all come back again Well, now Joe knew it wouldn't wait Because it was getting late My wife's gonna have this baby today Well, the man said, all I got to offer is a little old shack And you can find it if you look real hard, it's out round the back Chase those cattle out and move some things about I'll see you in the morning, don't forget to check out Well, if he'd known baby Jesus was king And if he'd known he created everything I feel sure they'd found him a better place to stay But as it was, baby Jesus got born there in the hay Find us on the web at crownpointchurch.com. Just remember, Crown and Point both have an E on the end of them, crownpointchurch.com. And you'll see information about the church and you'll see our service schedule right now, only Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. And you'll see some information about the Harbingers Quartet and other information bits and pieces for you, crownpointchurch.com. <clears throat> he came in sweet surrender to a manger here below. He came.
told us where you can reach us on the web, crownpointchurch.com, but you can also send us an email at crownpoint2010 at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you, see that those are listening, and if you have prayer requests, we will certainly pray for you about those requests. I'm going to be talking today, <clears throat> kind of a thought that is uh, buried uh, from uh, the book of Judges, chapter 1. So if you have your Bible close and you want to open it and just kind of peruse the first 10, 12, 13 verses or so, and I'm going to be taking some thoughts from those verses. <clears throat> When you think of the book of Judges and you hear names like Deborah and Barak and Gideon and others, even Samson, your mind most often wanders to immediately think of thoughts like, what tremendous heroes of God, what great leaders, look how greatly God used them, in the stories that are recorded here for us. In reality, that's not always the case. Few of the judges were consistently people of high moral integrity, even though God used them in great ways. Gideon, for example, led the people out of bondage. God used him greatly, and yet before he died, he was leading the whole nation of Israel to uh, bow and worship an idol that he himself had made. Many of Samson's heroic feats, you can think in your mind of several of the stories, things that he did, were really <clears throat> um, incidents, cases of disobedience, acts that he committed that were uh, uh, disobedient to the law of Moses, selfishly motivated acts, much more, than you would expect with his spiritual calling. Few then of the judges were consistently people of high moral character. For a minute, look at the time frame that the book of Judges covers. As chapter one unfolds, uh, they've been in the land of promise 25 or 30 years. Those are the years that we consume in the book of Joshua, but when Judges starts, they've already been in the land 25 or 30 years. And the events of Judges in this whole book covers at least 250 years, some say considerably more than that. The events and the stories then we're looking at uh, are covering several hundred years or more. I'm continually awed by God's sense of time and how mercifully he has been to Israel and to us. God speaks of 100 years, 200 years in ways that we speak of one or two years. You may know by now that between the Old Testament, book of Malachi, and the New Testament, book of Matthew, that there's 400 years of time that pass that nothing happens that God feels is worthy of record, uh, something that we should hear or learn from 400 years. Now for us, that's a long time. But for God, it's a whole different time uh, factor. And it takes a long time for God to kind of move through the calendars of time. Now he waited for Israel. Throughout the Old Testament, time and time again, he had hope for Israel, on and on. He yearned for Israel that they would be his people and he would be their God. Now, that's a union, a relationship that I've talked often about, and sometime on this video, I'll try to speak about that. He said often, Jehovah said often, I will be their God and they will be my people. The ramifications of that relationship are endless, but you think about it, and we'll come back to that one of these Sunday mornings. For 250 years or more, God had been merciful to Israel. He had forgiven their sin. He had corrected them. 
he had released them from bondage by the way of these judges that would raise up and lead the people to follow what God had said and they would be free and then serve God for a short period of time and then they would revert back to gods of wood and stone. That went on and on in the book of Judges alone for over 200 years, 250 some years, until there came a place where the bio records there was no remedy and he had to act and the Babylonian captivity We've read so much about God tries to wake them up by taking first the northern kingdom into bondage and then the southern kingdom into bondage in Babylon, Babylon excuse me, and uh, yet they still all continue this cycle of serving God and then not and then crying out to him and serving God for a while and then turning to idols of gold and silver and stone. <clears throat> but God was patient with them. When I was putting this thought together, uh, I asked the question, how long has God been patient with me? How long has God been patient with you? His time is different than our time. We're going to live 80, 90 years, I suppose. And how much of that time has God been waiting on me and you? Uh, <clears throat> How often have you rejected his spiritual advances? How often have you spurned his love and mercy? How long have you said in your heart, maybe even right out loud, there is no God, God is dead. <laughs> You've sinned when you knew better, expecting to just repent when you get through a certain situation. And I have kind of targeted that with calling it premeditated sin. You've taken his forgiveness for granted. As we study the book of Judges, this cycle of serving God when it suits them and there's a judge that will lead them and then not serving God when the judge dies and returning to worship idols, it repeats itself over and over and over again until there was no remedy. God finally refuses to help them and makes them stand on their own if they can. In Genesis 6, 3, we read, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. So how long has God been patient with me? How often has God been patient with you? If we take it a step farther, how long has he been patient with our country, the United States of America? You have to wonder how long God at any juncture here in the book of Judges would have left them alone in their own bondage, sin and tragedy if nobody would have cried out to him for deliverance and promised to serve him with all their heart. I'm encouraging you not yourself. I'm encouraging you not to wait so long to repent and return to serve him with all your heart. He's waiting with mercy. His mercy is new every morning. And he will forgive and you can restore relationship communion with God. I have a, a phrase that I've coined. I've not heard it anywhere else for what Israel has been going through, serving God and then not, and then serving God and then not, on and on as it goes. And I've labeled it spiritual schizophrenia. Now I went to Webster and he said it's a form of psychosis marked by a strong tendency to disassociate oneself with reality. Schizophrenia is often characterized by hallucinations, delusions, and improper reactions to situations. The word is often used informally as well as scientifically to indicate a split personality spiritual schizophrenia. Uh, David had it. He was the sweet singer of Israel. He was the friend of God. He was the man after God's own heart. And yet with Bathsheba, this is a different person. It's like he has two sides and something has happened and something switched and David allows great sin to come into his life only then to repent when confronted 
by the prophet. And you see that spiritual schizophrenia. Sometimes he is serving God with all his heart and other times it doesn't happen quite that way. Moses had it. Several of the characters that you read about in the Old Testament would have these same symptoms. And for us in the 21st century, I see some of that in our lives. Spiritual schizophrenia, when things are going well, when God is blessing, uh, when we're not tempted, uh, we can serve God and love him. And yet something happens, we get discouraged or we begin to complain or sin tempts us. And it's like we are a whole different person only hopefully one day to wake up and ask God for forgiveness. Spiritual schizophrenia, we'll come back to that thought over the months, but uh, think about that a little bit. Let me leave you with some thoughts today. First, how long has God been patient with you? Isn't it time that you would ask him to forgive your sin, to be your savior, and to restore a connection where he would be your God and you would be his people. Don't wait so long this time to repent and return to serve him. Next thing to leave with you is God saved Israel often because of the voice of a few that were crying out to him for deliverance. I wonder if God would save the United States of America if Christians today would cry out to him with their whole heart and ask his forgiveness, promise to serve him, and invite his presence and power to deliver us. The next thought to leave with you is that whole idea of spiritual schizophrenia, and I'm asking you to think about that in your life. How often are you serving God with your whole heart only to find yourself thinking or doing something you can't imagine that God would be accepted of and only to find that repentance is the only way back to the person you used to be? The last thought to leave with you is this. Does your heart ever break as you read God's word? Some of these stories... I don't know how intensely you read God's word and what it does to you on the inside, but has your heart ever been broken as you read some of these stories, even in the book of Judges and God's word? Does it break for them? Oh, how foolish, you might say, were these people that they should have recognized. All they needed to do was continue to worship Jehovah and they would, would have freedom from their enemies and they would have the blessing of God. Your heart just breaks that they couldn't see that and continue to worship God. As you read God's word, does your heart ever break for you? In the 21st century, we're not anything different than what those people were. We learn by example from what we read in God's word. Does your heart ever break for you that a nation has drifted so far from serving God and are missing out on God's best blessings. Does your heart ever break for God? Now there's a, a new thought. God is patient and God is understanding. God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit love us and have demonstrated that Jesus giving his life on the cross that we might know forgiveness. Uh, how often does God's heart ache and break as he sees mankind, even Christians, with a bit of spiritual schizophrenia, uh, Christians that won't worship him or obey his commandments or follow his teaching, uh, often as I'm preparing messages, reading and studying God's word, there's an ache in my heart. I can sometimes just feel God's heart breaking. I wonder sometime <clears throat> that if the United States of America, when the pilgrims came, was a new attempt at God looking for a people that would worship him in spirit and in truth. It was working out pretty well in the very beginning, but we're a long way, a far distance from that. If I leave you with nothing else today, I would hope that you could begin to feel the heart of your God as he looks at these people, not just in judges, but as he looks at us today. 
there is no way that man would have had this kind of patience, love, and mercy. And you just have to exclaim, oh, what a savior. Can the end, can the rapture be too far away? God is coming soon. In the presence of Jehovah, God Almighty, Prince of Peace, Heavenly Father, troubles vanish, hearts are mended in the presence of the King. We come to you as individuals asking you to forgive our sin and to mend our hearts as they break for others, they break for you. As a nation stands brokenhearted before you, Having walked so far away, we ask you to heal and to mend. Father, for some that are watching today that would right now ask you to forgive their sin, by your promise, come into their heart, wash them clean, restore them, I pray, and cast their sin into the deepest sea. We will give you praise in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. This is Pastor Kranz, my wife Judy, wishing you God's best today. May God bless you. <laughs>